Okay, today we'll be opening up this used Toyota oil filter, number 90915-YZZN1. And I got this used oil filter from a very generous viewer who wants to be known as Rideshare Sienna, driven for Uber, from Covington, Washington. Thank you. This oil filter was in service for 7 weeks, 6,162 miles, and came off of his 2021 Toyota Sienna. Yep, the one with the 2.5 liter hybrid, which now has 173,034 miles. He was using 0W16 Pennzoil Platinum full synthetic oil during this period. We'll also look at an oil analysis from this oil change interval. So let's get started. Okay, so before we open this filter up, let's take a quick look at it. Got the filter number. Made in Thailand. Instructions here. And look here, let's see the date code. GHF B18. This filter has eight element holes, metal core with holes, bypass valve at the dome end, three grooves there for threads, and this P style O ring gasket. Now I'll put the thickness of this gasket up on the screen. Yeah, it looks looks like an average one, I guess. It's nice. All right, let's open this filter up and see what it looks like. Okay, not too much oil. Put that aside. Okay, any drain back valve. A little oil in there, so it's holding. I had to put a Q-tip through these holes. I cut a Q-tip in half to get it in there because these holes are so small. Oh. I don't even want to get that off because my, oh, there it goes. It's all slippery. Oh, held its shape. I don't see no tears in it. Yeah, that looks fine. It held up good for 6,000 miles. Okay, and the filter element. This looks like the seam. Yeah. Now I'll put the number of pleats up on the screen. Unfortunately, I don't have what this filter is made out of. It's probably a blend, some kind of blend. And I don't have the micron rating. I'll squeeze it out and see how it looks, but yeah. And the cores come right out like that. It's got the plastic in here. And somebody was asking me before, so you can see it goes inside of it a little bit. So. The bypass valve. That looks fine. Yeah, so it goes in like that. Looks like it would probably make a pretty good seal. Okay, in the can, I'll put the thickness of the can, the flutes, and the width of the can up on the screen. See a little bit of carbon that's sitting there. See those spots? What I'll do is I'll, I'll have it sitting like that. Let it, let it drain out a little bit and see if they're gritty or not. Feel them with my fingers. Okay. Let's get the width of this filter. One point nine two inches wide. Make sure that was zeroed off. Yeah, close enough. Okay, well let me cut this filter, 
squeeze it out, stretch it out, and see what it looks like. Be right back. Okay, and here's the filter all stretched out. And this filter media is 53 inches long. Okay, so here's the oil report. And I'll try to read this quickly. This is a great addition to your Toyota's file. Silicone came down this time, not by a lot, only four parts per million, but you won't catch us complaining about an improvement, however small. We'll keep an eye on silicon to make sure it doesn't increase again, but at this point, we aren't too worried about dirt contamination. Wear metals are just a tad higher this time, but that makes sense for longer interval, and they're still in good ranges. We found a trace of fuel in the sample, but that's harmless. The TBN is strong at 5.2, so try 8,000 miles if you'd like. I think I'd stay with 6,000 miles fills me. That's just my opinion. But let's look at the rest of the report. Okay, so I just want to explain these numbers and uh, what they mean. So he was using Pennzoil Platinum this time around. And then he had Toyota in. And then he had Mobile Advanced Fuel Economy the time before that. This is an average. These numbers here are an average between all three of these oils, the Penzo, the Toyota, and the Mobile. Obviously, the mileage isn't the same on all these, so the numbers are going to be different. But you can see it did a four here, and the average was a four between these three oils. Zero here on the chromium. On the iron, it was seven. Slightly copper, it was, it was one for an average. These guys had copper. Uh, zero across the line here for the lead. Tin was out uh, of zero. And these numbers here, universal numbers, from what I understand, they use any kind of oil for their averages. They, it could be a mobile, it could be a Toyota, it could be um, Castro, whatever. And they just take all the averages, but it's for this type of engine. So obviously these here, the wear metal should be close, but the additive package are going to be totally different than what these other oils are. So down here we got Molly B, 68. His average was 251 between these three oils. It was really high on this oil, the Toyota oil, 591, and 94 on the mobile, the Universal 116. Nickel, zero. Manganese, one. Except for the mobile, didn't have anything. Silver was zero across. Titanium, two. So it averaged out to one because there wasn't any in these. Potassium, it was zero. You got one here in the, between these two averages, two here for the Toyota. Okay, for the boron, you got 125. And these are all parts per million. 114 for this average. And 148 for the Toyota, 69 for the mobile. Silicon was 22, average was 22. It was 26 on the Toyota, 19 for the mobile. Sodium, three. And there, that's pretty average there, I guess, four for the Toyota, two. And you can look at these universal averages if you want here but I'm not gonna really go into these I think these are more important because that's the way you can judge how his engine is doing with these oils right here now let's put this down a little bit okay so the calcium was 866 and the average between all three oils was 1028 the universal average is 1164 the magnesium was 619 on this Penzo oil, and the average was 604, so that seems pretty good. They dropped here and they went up here on the mobile oil. And the universal average was 555. In the phosphorus, we got 486 for the Penzo oil. 572 was the average. Universal, 639. The zinc, 
617 for the Pennzoil. The average between these three was 687. Universal 731. And barium zero. Mobile had a one. The average is zero. Okay, and these numbers here are really important. Let me bring it down a little bit here. Okay, so here we got the viscosity numbers. So the Penzo came in at 47.7. It's right in between the 43 and 55, what it should be at. Toyota was 46.5 and the Mobile was 46.5. 6.57 for the Penzo. It's right in between the 5.1 to 9.1, so it falls into spec. Toyota was 6.19 and the Mobile was 6.20. Now the flash point on the Pennzoil was kind of low, which is kind of strange because it, it only had a trace of fuel in it. It should be greater than 385. Now Toyota came in at 425 for a flash point, And the Mobile came in at 345 for a flash point. Which it'll, it'll have a lower number for a flash point if you have more fuel in it. So the Mobile did have more fuel in it with 2.0. The Toyota had 0.5 fuel in it, but like I said, the Pennzoil only had trace, so it should have been a higher flash point. But I don't know what the Pennzoil starts off as, as a flash point with the virgin oil. I would think it's pretty close with the Toyota and the Mobile, but who knows. Okay, and we got antifreeze zero, water zero, 0.1 for insolubles for the Pennzoil. Anything less than 0.6 is good. We got 0.1 for the Toyota and 0.1 for the Mobile. TBN 5.2, which is pretty high. Anything greater than 2.0 is good. 5.6 for the Toyota, which is good. And 5.0 for the Mobile, which is also pretty good. This is just my opinion, but between these three oils, I would I think I'd stay with the Penz oil. What do you guys think? And let's take a look at the rest of the filter. Okay, let's get the thickness of this filter media. 0.88 millimeters thick. Yeah, 0.8887, pretty close. Okay, this is the filtering side, back side. And if we take a look at this under a microscope, you're gonna see a couple small carbon particles, soot particles. So let's take a look at that picture. So I think it did a pretty good job of filtering it. It's running really clean. I mean, look at his filter media. It's, his engine's running clean. It's nice. Looks pretty good. Let's take a look at it up close. I don't know what this is. This is, you know, it's a little carbon, I think. There's a little bit of carbon there, you can see. A little bit there. That's nothing there. That's just probably something that I I did. I was cutting it open. I mean, it's some there's some little bit of carbon in the seams, but not much. Yeah, it's 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 really clean for six thousand miles. I would say it's really clean. I don't know if I've seen one this clean for six thousand miles. Now let's take a look at the rest of the filter. Okay, so here's the filter end caps that I cut off. Look at it up close. You can see the, the plastic in it there. You know, this bypass valve does, it does leak when I did a flashlight test on it in a past video. It does leak around here, but these kind of bypass valves seem to leak. Okay. You got metal holes here for center core. You got a seam here. So that's all fine. Gaskets, we went over these. And I wanted to say, like, when I got the filter, I, had to, I, I shook it and I could hear the oil in there. So what I did is 
I usually use the a Q-tip at this end, you know, with the cotton on it. But, you know, being like these slits are so skinny, I have to use this end. But you got to be very careful because you push it in there and you hold it up like, kind of like this. And all the oil will drain out. Hold it at an angle. But you got to be careful not to, because it's kind of sharp sometimes. You don't want to poke a hole into the anti-drain back valve. And I had this filter sitting like this, this can. And let's see how this stuff feels. It's a little gritty. But it, it's gritty, but it smoothens out when I'm rubbing it. So those are some kind of carbon particles. Probably since the oil drained out, I had to sit in for about a day. And uh, the oil came out of it, so they probably hardened up. Whereas if they had some oil in them, still they'd probably be a lot smoother. But not bad. I mean, it looks looks pretty clean. And again, I want to thank Rideshare for sending me this oil filter and oil report. And I think I'll wrap this video up. And don't forget, Oil Filter Fridays. I try to open up an oil filter every Friday on this YouTube channel. So if you like this video, please hit that like button. Thanks for watching and take care.